welcome to another episode of Unbreakable Confidence. It's your host, Ryan Romano, and I got my good friend that I was able to meet a couple years ago. We shared a stage together, and we had to, we had to go ahead and do this. Otherwise, we were going to talk forever uh, before <laughs> actually getting on the show. But I'll introduce him. It is Dr. Matthew Knowles. He's the president and CEO of Music World Entertainment Corporation. He's an author. He's a speaker. He's an artist manager, sold... Oh gosh, over 450 million records worldwide. He's been involved in the careers of like Destiny's Child, Beyonce, and we can go on and on and on for pages, but I wanna get into conversation because I think that's the most important part to be able to share your knowledge and your wisdom with all our listeners. So usually we kick it off first questions first is, is I see you as a, um, a high performer, a high achiever. People that have not, you've not only been able to do it for yourself, but you've been able to do it for coaching and mentoring or managing others. Um, and I believe that all high achievers have certain uniquenesses, or I call them like superpowers about themselves. What would you say is one or two of like your uniquenesses or your superpowers that are able to like set you apart from everybody else? Well, first of all, thank you, Ryan. I love that energy, man, that you bring. I love it. I love it. You know, that's a very good question. I, I would like to say a couple of things. One is my ability to listen. Yeah. When people are talking, I'm actually listening. Uh, not some people are thinking of the answer. or I'm actually wanting to engage and listen to the person. Um, the other one is strategic planning. Uh, people always like to use the word planning, but is it strategic? Right. And, and those are the two things, I, if I had to list two things and the third thing would be living my passion, whatever yeah. that is, is finding that passion, living that passion, because that's what energizes us. That's what gives that wake up in the morning, I can't wait, go to bed, I can't wait till tomorrow. That's what gives us the energy for the work ethics because work ethics and passion coexist. Those will be the three things. Yeah. So what are what's kind of that that passion for you right now? I know we were talking about before the show in terms of, of being able to, uh, you know, get out and start speaking again, obviously, with what's going on in the world, being able to get in front of people and share that knowledge and wisdom experience that you've had uh, for uh oh, can I can I say the age? I know it's your birthday. Happy birthday. Everybody's got to wish them a happy birthday. Um, but what is that passion for you right now in, in sharing to the world and the people that you get in front with in front of? Well, my passion hadn't really changed uh, a lot over the years. Uh my passion is to educate and to motivate in certain areas, uh entrepreneurship, health and wellness, because uh I don't know if it's been a just around the time I saw you, but I'm a cancer survivor. I had surgery. Um, those are the areas that I'm just absolutely passionate about talking about the music industry. Yeah. And, and really engaging people and motivating people uh, in their lives, whatever it is they want to do to m help motivate them to get to that end, that end place they want to be. Yeah. And would you say too, I know the first thing that you talked about in terms of like your superpowers of like being able to listen, I always think that, you know, step one in building any kind of relationship is like, it's really getting that trust and connection with people. And so is that kind of like what you're after and being able to listen and hear what their needs and their wants are so that you can understand them better? Is that kind of like the That's route? Absolutely. That you can what I'm saying is, is understanding that person and building that relationship, that down, um, that trust, as you just said, uh, how do you build that? And you build that by listening because when you respond, you respond from a place of just having a conversation now, again, rather than just thinking. A lot of people, when they communicate, they're thinking all the time. Yeah. Well, what should I say next? So the, rather than just having a conversation and it being organic. Yeah, and I, well, and as you and I like both know too, like, there's an energy about that, right? Like you can sit down with somebody and start to have that conversation and be like, oh, this feels kind of weird. Or like, man, like, I don't know what it is about that person, but I can really connect with them just by their response and what they're saying. 
and the body body language. Oh, 100 you know? percent Yeah. Body language language tells a lot. I'm, I'm seeing <laughs> your body language. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I was so impressed when I, I saw you and we were at the TED talk. Uh just your energy. I mean, that's that's also very important because I could we have this conversation now and kind of lay back, or I can be engaged with you, Ryan, and bring energy with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that people, I think the neat part about that too is, is in, you know, it's why I enjoy being around people like you and picking your brains because like we feed off that with each other, right? Like that's passed along with each other, your energy and being able, I can like watch you body language and take things away and understand and like embody those things for me to help me get to that next level. And that's what makes it so unique. Yeah. So let me share this with you. So I okay. just I just turned 70. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And so I was I was in Cabo, my wife and I with some friends, and um, we just had a really great conversation and somehow came up one of the best two ages in our lives. And actually pulled out Google, Professor Google, and started Googling. <laughs> and and actually was surprised that I found age 20 and age 70 are the two best times of our lives. So the question is why? At age 20, you're at a place that you have very little responsibilities. You can take all sorts of risks. Typically you have parents that'll bail you out if you make a mistake. And so you're pretty carefree. At age 70, you have to remember that between 45 and 60 is the most turbulent times of our lives between 45 and 60, because typically marriages could go awry. Mm -hmm. uh, you have kids that are challenging, getting them in college. You have financial responsibilities. Uh, you could have tax burdens. Uh, you can have health issues. But by 70, all of that should be behind you in your rear view window. Mm -hmm. So most people at 70, they've gone through life challenges. And so at 70, happiness can happen. Do you, have you felt a shift? Oh, I absolutely have. Good for I you. I work on happiness every day, Ryan. How I do started, you go about, I'm always, I'm always, all right, so this is like a super, cause I'm like have an obsession with like personal growth. So how is it like, what do you do and maybe even share things that you've picked up being around other high achievers, higher performers, um, or things that you've passed along to those same individuals and things that you've developed yourself. But like, what are some of those habits or routines like you kind of do for yourself to be able to make sure that you're living in that, that happy state? Well, some of that comes with dieting, comes with exercise, but most of all, I call it looking out the window. Okay. And a lot of times I just look out the window and I'm creative and I'm at peace with myself. Just Damn. look, I want you to look out the window with me right now. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I can be at peace. <laughs> so typically everything I do, I'm always looking out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Certain energy of the universe, uh, a certain calmness. Again, I, it's a creative space for me uh, where I can have joy and peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think that that's because we live in such a fast-paced, high-strung society. It's so hard for people to learn how to calm the noise. And then you, you, you toss around words, especially to like, you know, as, as we were talking about before, um, being around a lot of like college athletes and college kids in general, just that age group, you mentioned words like meditating and things like that. And they're so like uh, turned off by that, but it's finding ways for them to understand whatever you want to call it, meditating, staring out the window or looking out the window to be able to like, man, really calm all that noise because that ultimately is going to bring that joy and happiness because we're so distracted of comparing and everything else. And you have to learn how to manage this thing. 
Yeah. <laughs> Especially if you're in your 20s. <laughs> big time, big, 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 big time. Um, that, that becomes their biggest challenge is managing that, that cell phone. It's uh, social media and all that. It's, and then, I mean, you have to think that it's probably only going to get worse. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going, it doesn't look like it's going this way. It only looks like it's headed up. You know, the metaverse and all other st stuff that's about to happen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of time is be spent on this computer in that virtual world mm -hmm. with your avatar and at your home, creating your own home and your own day. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a different world. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm very concerned about that because it's going to take away that human element. Um, well, it's it's even the um, the idea of, of you know again within myself being able to mentor these kids and everyone's like, well, yeah, you can do it over Zoom now, and I'm like, but I don't I don't want to do it over Zoom, okay. right? Like I want to be able to sit in front of these individuals and have conversations because there is a power within that human connection and feeling that energy. Exactly. And you can't get that on, on Zoom at all. Yeah. 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 So I wanted to pick your brain about something. And actually, it, it wasn't even uh, kind of on my mind to ask per se, but it came up with multiple uh, like mentorship meetings that I was having this week. And it was kids struggling to be, and these are actually college kids. Um, basically still getting coached by their parents, right? But their parents aren't their coach, right? Like they have their college coaches and everything like that. But when they go home or they pick up the phone and they're talking to mom and dad, um, you know, is they don't, that's the first thing they want to talk about, right? Like athletics and sports and getting coached by them. And you've been in the world of, of being involved within managing your own daughter's and family's life and how was it like how did you manage that because I think that that is so critical there's a lot of parents listening there's college coaches listening coaches in general is listening I think this is one of the most powerful topics because we have a lot of helicopter parents <laughs> that, <laughs> that want to hover over um, we have a lot of parents that just need to learn to be mom and dad um, and when, when that time to like extract yourself, because some of them maybe coached them when they were in little league or peewee or, you know, whatever it is, but what's some advice you can give that maybe you've had learned and developed like within your own experience with that? This is a great topic. And it's one I want you to consider you and I doing seminars in the future. Absolutely. I had even thought about it. Parents of talented and gifted kids, what should I do uh -huh. as, as a topic? Because there's a, a, a big difference in parenting and coaching. Uh, parenting is giving inspiration to your kid. Parenting is finding that thing that motivates your child, giving them opportunities to experience different things in life and paying attention to what they gravitate to. And an example of that, I used to with Solange and Beyonce, we would go to science fairs, we would go to the hospital, we would go to NASA, we would go uh, to the dance troops, we would go to singing and, um, groups and bands. I wanted to expose them to everything and then kind of, again, listen and be quiet and let them tell me. Mm -hmm. I always give this example, Ryan. If I have to tell my son to go, he needs to be at practice tomorrow, and I have to wake him up the next morning, that's not his passion. Right. That's his hobby. And you have to know the difference between a passion and a hobby. I have never in Beyonce's life had to tell her about getting to practice. <laughs> yeah. She's always bugged the hell out of me, like that. You know, tomorrow I gotta be at practice, nine o'clock. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a passion. Yeah. And, and so when you talk about coaching, that is a profession. Managing is a profession. 
So you have to build the skill set for that. I went back to school to become a manager in the music industry. I had already came from 20 years of corporate America in sales, marketing, and management. So I had a background already in management. Right. But I wanted to even increase my knowledge, uh, specifically the music industry. And I went to as many seminars as I could. Uh, and, and I really put a lot of time and effort and money in building, uh, building also relationships. Right. Then you are qualified to say you're an artist manager. Yeah. Before that, you're a momager or a dadager. <laughs> so that's the difference is that being qualified and understanding that once, <coughs> excuse me, once you become a manager, the, the hardest thing is to watch your child fail. And sometimes as a manager, you have to put your players in a position that they have to fail. Mm-hmm. I truly believe Saban, uh, not in that game, but in the game against Texas A&M, I truly believe he let them lose oh, wow. because failure and mistakes is an opportunity to grow and not a reason to quit. And most parents, they don't understand that. If they're going to help their child, they have to sometimes let them fail on their own. Right. And like... Once they, in an incident, and in maybe again, you can use, or even specifically, like with Beyonce, like once you start to have that success, I see, well, and even in the athletic world, you see a lot of people, they don't know how to handle that, right? Like they don't know how to handle that stress and pressure. Like it's fun, there's no expectations. Nobody's heard of me. I'm not the champion yet. Maybe I haven't sold, you know, a gazillion records, whatever the case may be. And then when some people get there, they don't know how to manage that. So, and like, even like for her instance and or, uh, other things that you've seen is, is like, how do you understand to learn or how do you teach yourself how to, to manage that success and continue to grow, to not plateau, but definitely not fall off, but continue that growth pattern? Well, you know, sadly as it is, 75% of all people who win the lottery are broke within three years. Right. 75% because they couldn't, they couldn't manage. One day I have lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do with it? And it's right. the, same, the same analogy. One day I'm a successful basketball player, a recording artist, uh, and everybody loves me. At least I think everybody loves me. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Based off double taps on Instagram. (laughs) Right. Uh, And and so, you know, within that, uh, that's where that team becomes very important. The team that you have when you start out building a career Mm -hmm. uh, at coach and parents, uh, being supportive rather than coaching. Right being supportive. Uh, When I started out with Beyonce, all I did uh, was drop her off at practice and I'd go play basketball and come back and pick her up. I'd never gotten to, other than that, did you have a lot of fun? Yeah, Yeah. dad, that's all I needed to know. You had a lot of fun. Um, So we have to understand those roles. You know, we have a lot of parents that, uh, and, and every parent, want to think that their kids are, are, have a skill set in some area. And right. I think most kids do, but it's up to parents to help them find out at an early age, because what we do know, Ryan, there's a direct relationship to in any area, those that are most successful started out when like six, seven, eight, nine years old. They didn't start out at 20, 21. Right. They started out very young and got the support from their parents. And which I started out by saying parents should be supportive. Yep. yep, got, yep. The, got the support from their parents to do the things to get them started. Yeah. I mean, that's the key is, is, um, while they're while they're that young is is not making it feel like a job 
right? Like kind of like what you were saying earlier in terms of, of like not wanting to go to practice or, you know, dreading getting out of bed or like dreading having to go to practice after school, like whatever the case may be. Um, because in their minds, it's almost like this is a hassle. This is a job. But I think it's important also, and I'd love to get your opinion on this too, is to expose them to as many things as possible. Well, right? that's like, yeah, exact, exactly. The exposure is key and critical. But let's go back to the parents thinking that their kids having a, a outside activity, they're thinking that how do you not make the child feel like it's a job? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my comeback to that is, well, well, mom, dad, how do you make your kid, how do you make them feel that going to class is not a job? Because when you're eight, nine, 10 years old, that's a damn job. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you ain't lying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know many kids, but, oh yeah, I look forward to going to school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> But you do have kids to say, hey, I look forward to going to practice tomorrow or going to a re music recital tomorrow, right. whatever it is, or to going to the science fair tomorrow. And again, that's the role of the parent is to pay attention to where and what your kid gravitates to mm -hmm. and then surround them with the support of that. Like we surrounded our kids, we got a vocal coach. We put them in dance, and dance. Uh, we we did those fundamental type of things to see if that was the, truly their passion. So, what do you think? Uh, based off this, what do you think is harder, getting there or sustaining? Oh, I'll, absolutely, sustaining. Sustaining, and, and not to discount getting there, but not being very, very, very difficult. Right. But once you get there, you have so many distractions that can take you away. Very true. A, a, a real simple example is you are, uh, uh, let's say you're, you're a basketball player and now you've got in the NBA, um, distraction is, is that now you wanna buy several companies and you want to be a businessman and run them all, um, that's going to take away from your, your, your basketball ability. Right. Or you're a, a recording artist, and now you want to have a clothing line, and you want to have all these things, and you want to run your own, you want to manage yourself now. Uh, it takes the time away from your creativity, and that space is needed. So that can be, I've seen that, happens so many times and it, typically as you also become larger in scope you have to be very careful not to have yes people around you mm -hmm. people that will say oh ryan that was a great idea well ryan is paying me five hundred thousand dollars a year and that's a lot of money and I won't want to offend Ryan in any way. <laughs> Although I know that was a stupid idea. I'm going to tell Ryan it was a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, that's kind of what kind of segues into my next question too, is it's like, I feel like that's like one of my major, major, uh, again, especially with the college age is, is understanding the environment that they're in now. And sometimes that can be, and it's, it doesn't make you a bad person if, cause sometimes you outgrow your friends. That's not a bad thing. That doesn't make you an out, like a bad person. And sometimes it, 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 it can even be family, right? Like sometimes like parents want something and you just know, like intuitively, like this, I know this is the right move for me, the right decision, whatever. I know I need to do this. Um, and it doesn't mean you lose relationships or you never speak to them again, but I think we outgrow people. But I think to a certain sense, like it's almost like society has like hardwired us to believe it's like, if you, if you do something to upset a friend or family member, that makes you a bad person. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. Uh, you, you're absolutely right on that, Ryan, uh, because as we grow in life, 
uh, we, we change. We, we change in positive ways and we want to have people around us that understand what we are passionate about. I mean, think about it. You, you, you become a football player, uh, you're going to, as you become greater at the sport, you're going to find yourself mainly surrounded, your friends are football players. Right. Well, you have a few that are not, but for the most part, because you have that commonality uh, also, and, and you want both have a common goal. Right. And so sometimes we have to change. I can't tell you, it's my 17th year in a classroom, and it's a very sad moment. Every class, there are students that wanted to be in a music industry. And this is one of my classes I teach is the fundamentals of the music industry in a digital age. Uh -huh. and, and these kids, and, and some of them aren't kids, would say, you know, I wanted to be in the music industry, but my mom and dad both are attorneys. So they wanted me to go to law school. Or my dad was a doctor. He wanted me to go to medical school. Or they said I could get into music after I got my degree, but I had to get a degree in something different. I mean, we destroy our kids with that. It loses so much creativity. And it n seldom works out it, because I'm doing something, my day-to-day -day job in life is something I hate. Yep. It's not something I love, it's something I hate. I have to go to work tomorrow and I have to do this job when I really want to be on this stage. Yeah, and then um, I think it's uh, on, the, on the flip side of that too, there's the people that try to get there for the wrong reasons, right? Like they want the fame, the clout, that's the only reason they want to be in the industry. There is no love and passion for it because because of social media and everything else, it's like, well, I want what they have just because it looks fun and looks it looks cool, but they have no conceptual understanding of, of like what goes into that. <laughs> and, and they they are like a microwave; you turn it on and off. Yeah, and it's gone. We call it microwave success. Yeah, 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 yeah. and it, like instant gratification, right? Like yeah. want it right here, right now. Um, so what would you think is like one, two, three, whatever, like critical elements in terms of, of like developing kid, young adults, uh, like self-esteem, confidence, um, cause as we were talking about before we jumped on here is like, you know, I found within that, that college age, there's just such a, a gap and a hole with like. You know, these people are like the cream of the crop of their sport, right? They're division one athletes and things like that. And you sit down and have an individual conversation with them. And it's like, they lack this, this love for themselves, basically, right? They, they lack that ability to look in the mirror and just like, man, it's good to be me today, right? Like just simple things like that. So what would you say, let's one or two things in terms of, of like maybe you've used, you've seen, you've developed, maybe you do personally, um, and, and helping these young adults just love themselves more? Well, when I look back at my life, I, you know, I was grateful and blessed to be the number one sales rep for multiple years in the world for Xerox. I've been able to watch my kids be the very best. I've been able to know people like Kobe Bryant personally and other athletes that there's a difference in being good and there's compared to being great. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, but people I know that are great have a high self-esteem. Mm -hmm. People that are great understand the word team, understand that it's we versus I, understand when they need to ask for help. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, people that are great, they do those things. People that are good, no, they have those other issues. I try to focus on whatever I do in the classroom, as a manager, when I'm speaking. My 
number one motivation is to help people understand what is required for greatness, not to be good. First day of every one of my class, classes I've ever taught, starts out like this. If you just want to be good, don't come back next class. I only teach greatness. I don't teach goodness. I teach greatness. Yeah. Do you think that, um, cause I think one of the, the areas that holds people back to from that good to great, um, people pleasing, um, you know, the ability kind of what you were saying before, uh, the ability to say no in certain situations, the ability to understand what are the right opportunities. But again, I just bumped into so many people and they like acknowledge it. They know like literally tears down their face. Like, like I just, I'm, I'm terrified because I don't want to let anyone down. I'm like, well, the reality is you're letting yourself down. Like, So, so Ryan, listen to what, what you're saying, which is so, amazing and important. We talked about parents at the beginning. That's the role of parenting, not to be the coach. Right. But to instill that confidence, to instill those qualities in their kids and then let them decide. That's an important role. And often I'm trying to be the coach rather than to be the parent. Right. Because yeah. once you're parenting, you know, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And I say this with utmost gratitude. You never heard Solange and Beyonce do some crazy stuff, ever. You're right. You're right. And I hope that was from their parenting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's where, it, again, you think about like just, from a like biological standpoint from the age of zero to six sometime argue seven is is our brains are like sponges right and so it's it's what our environment our parents and everything it's those things that they instill in us that become those su the subconscious part of our life such so, so early on and so what do we do if we didn't get that and that is mental health mental health is critical today even more so than ever and going to a therapist early in life. Right. Understanding, if my, I, maybe I didn't have the parents that could give me this. Maybe they didn't have the tools to give it to me. But you and I have to spread the word and the message is you also have to get this mental strength mm -hmm. to be an athlete or to be a competitor. And part of that mental strength is having that confidence and the lack of confidence comes from things that generally happen in our early childhood that's not resolved and the way we resolve that is going to someone asking for help hopefully somebody got that vicious circle yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no i i think of it in terms of, of most again like 20 year old so to speak is is they they're trying to figure out what happened within the last six months or a year that makes them think like this. And I'm like, no, 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 there's a root cause. There's something deep down ingrained in you and we gotta go there. We gotta pull that root out. Yeah. Not thinking that your boyfriend broke up with you six months ago, that that's what's making you upset. It's like, <laughs> there's there's layers to this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's that when that teacher or that parent or someone in society said, you will never do this because, and that because could be your girl, you're poor, you're black, you LGBTQ community, whatever the because. Right. And you still are believing that. And I call it being a box in thinker because who you associate with are people that are box in thinkers. Yeah. So you're, inside of this box and you never think outside of the box because you surrounded with people that were box in thinkers who someone told them in their early years why they couldn't do something versus why they could and it's you're still stuck in that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. well I'll, I'll round it out last question i know i told you 30 minutes and we've already gone over our time um so if you could share one thing one piece of advice coach parent kids whatever is if you could 
I always talking about like, I think about like if I read a book or if I go to an event is I always want to take one thing away. And if I can like implement maybe that one thing within my life, then I'll know that I'm like headed in a new direction, the right direction, a better direction, a more fulfilling direction. Um, what would your golden nugget be for kid, coach, parent, all the above, whoever? My, it would be being a risk taker. Uh, and, and, and by that, let's say I'm a basketball player. Uh, taking a risk to shoot that three-point shot. But you have to practice that three-point shot over and over and over. But being a risk taker that I'm going to sing this song a different way. I'm not going to start with the verse, the chorus. I'm going to start out with the chorus. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to be the risk taker that I'm a gymnast that if I run faster, I know it's a risk I could come off the beam, but I'm going to take that risk with speed and agility. Being a risk taker or doing it a different way, in a better way, that's how the world has always changed by being a risk taker. And But understanding that when you're a risk taker, it's a lonely road. Oh, yeah. Very lonely road because people won't get you. They won't understand. You'll be like, what the hell? Why, why would he quit his corporate job to be a manager? What? Why? But you, you, you have to understand that that's part of it. And lastly, the part of risk taking, you're going to make mistakes. Yeah. And, and I said it earlier, you should be ecstatic when you make a mistake because you say, okay, it didn't work that way. Now I'm going to go back and take a risk and try it a different way. Because yeah. when you make those mistakes and you have those failures, there are opportunities to even be better at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I love this kid right now that's playing uh, with the Golden State Warriors, Curry. That young man shoots a thousand three point shots a day and has been doing it for years. He didn't just start out shooting threes yeah. <laughs> imagine I, I mean when i look at who was to me the greatest basketball player of all times you know michael jordan michael jordan didn't make his varsity basketball team i think of beyonce in, in junior high school beyonce was in this uh, um musical that the school did yeah she's in eighth grade and they made her a tree. <laughs> and I said to her, she's like, Dad, they make, told me I'm a tree. And I said, guess what? That's great. Practice <laughs> on being the best tree ever. <laughs> but you get my point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's like, be a risk taker. Do, yeah. dare, to, dare to do it differently. That's how you make a mark, is by being a, a risk taker. Those are the people that get our attention when they take those risks and they do things differently. And, and when it succeeds, you, you impact the world with that. Yeah, no, no kidding. I always tell uh, the kids too, is it's like, you know, it's, I, oh gosh, who is it? I forget if it's Einstein or who it was, Edison, who it was, it's like, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different result is the definition of insanity, right? But yet that's how many, so many people live their lives. It's like they wake up doing the same thing over and over and over again, hoping that they're going to like get to a new level in their life. And it's like, man, the, the, the growth is only in the unknown. Like that's, that's where it lives. So if you want something right now, it's in the unknown. You got to venture down a different path and see, see where that takes you. Well, what, what you don't want to end up is having that title that I almost did. Yeah. And a lot of people have that title. I almost made the team. I almost married her. I almost got the job. Uh, you know, and, and that's because they didn't do that. They didn't put in that effort, extra work, being a risk taker, being prepared, having a passion and understanding that what comes with past passion is practice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always, uh, I think of when you talk about passion too, and people like living in their glory days is, uh, is the people that are truly living 
right now very rarely talk about the good old days, right? Like, the, because every, everything's fun and exhilarating right now versus I think of it in sports. Some people are like, man, back when I was in high school, you know, like talking about this. It's like, oh, okay, that says enough right there. <laughs> well, I'm proud to say uh, since we've talked, most people don't know, so I share. I'm a uh, one of the owners of the Chicago Sky WNBA basketball team. Oh, man. And uh, we, since day one, I believed in the WNBA. Yeah. Uh, and we won our first championship. So congrats. I'm very proud to be an owner of a championship. Who does? Team. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. That's a whole nother conversation to get into. <laughs> yeah, well, we need to do that. <laughs> Let's do it, man. We'll have to block it out. But like I said, I don't want to. I want my because you took everybody. He took his birthday to celebrate it with us and talk to you guys. So I'm super grateful, super appreciative. And like I said before, is hopefully everybody's listening and as everybody tunes in, they're able to understand and take away one thing and be able to you know implement that or uh, start to notice conversations you're having with your kids or coaches the same thing with your own athletes and just. I always think about, start thinking about what you're thinking about. And I think that that's important to hear from other people like yourself um, and having experienced life in general um, and, and also at a, at a high level, at a, as a high performer, a high achiever and things like that. So well, I, I, I do want you to think about a seminar that we can put together because, you know, sports is now entertainment. Yep. Uh, and so they, they, they go together. So yeah. I, I would love to have the opportunity to work with you on a seminar that we give to the public. There's yeah, so, many, start. so many parents out there that just they are good people, good parents, and they just don't know what to do. And yeah. they have talented kids, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll start brainstorming. Let's do that. <laughs> awesome. Why well, I appreciate it. And guys, if you have any questions, he's got plenty of books out there if you want to dive into and any more of his knowledge and brain and feel free to uh to either reach out to him personally contact me if you got questions comments concerns and uh would love to hear from you guys on that again thanks again my friend and thank uh, you ryan all they have to do is go to matthewknowles.com i make it easy boom there it is <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate it <laughs>